Hey, Emeril Lagasse here, and tonight on Emeril Live, hey, we're throwing a party. We'll start off with an orange cello martini and then dig into a fantastic hot clam dip. Next, we'll enjoy an outstanding sausage stuffed French bread and nibble on some Southwest cheesecake with cilantro pesto. And last but not least, delicious cheesy chicken tamales. Hey, grab your party hats and pour yourself a drink because we're celebrating right here on Emerald Live. show for you tonight, folks, because we're going to have a rockin' party here in New York City. <laughs> Speaking about rockin', give it up for Doc Gibbs in the Ember Live Band. Party time. Let's get it on. Talk to me. Yes, Jackson. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We're going to start the night off here with a little cocktail. Yes. Yes. We're going to do uh, a little orange cello. You like orange cello? Yes, yes. I do. We're going to take a little orange cello and uh, have a little orange cello martini. Ah, nice. Since nice. it's that kind of the day. Ah. Not to be confused with Lana's orange cello, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. You know, it's one of those days, it's gonna take the edge off. So we're gonna have a little ice here, Doc. You like orange cello? Yeah, yeah. I know you like martinis. Uh, yes, I do. So I'd like to get a little cold here first. And, um,. Then what we're gonna do, Doc, is we're gonna we're gonna go in with uh, I got a little orange flavored vodka. Oh man! So we'll get a little Ooh. shot of that. <laughs> then a little of this orange cello. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's like orange juice. Huh. A lot of vitamin C in there. Yeah, right? a little <laughs> heavily. A little Cointreau Ooh. has a little orange flavor too. You nice, know? nice. All right. I think what we should do is do a little, a little orange twist in here too. So we'll just get that flavor of the orange here, and we'll get the oils in there. Oh yeah, babe. Yeah. Now. Very sharp knives. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, Doc, so we'll let it get cold here. All right. This one's for you. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Orange flavored sugar. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, this is Woo. a big time show here. Come on. <laughs> This one's for you. And yeah. this one's for me. For you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, sometimes these things never shake right, Doc, you know? Yeah. You know, you gotta, oh, it's working tonight. That's nice. 
Remember we had one explode on us one time? Yeah, yeah. Was... I don't know where we were, but... A little messy. Yeah, it was, it was a little messy, Doc. You want it strained? I mean, I... <laughs> Why not? Oh, man. Nice. Get a lot for your money here. Oh, man. <laughs> so, a little orange in there. Nice. A little orange in here. Uh-huh. A little orange there. Oh, man, that looks wonderful. It's one of those days. Take the edge off. Thank you. I'm ready to take it off. Take the edge off. Here's you know to what you, I mean? folks. You're welcome, Lana. Yeah. My good friend, Chef Jamie Gwen in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, we'll talk more with her when we come back. Stick around. Back in. surprise for you now. I've got a really, 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 really good friend in the house uh, from Los Angeles. And her name is Chef Jamie Gwen. More importantly, we go back. We've done a lot of cooking over the years. Even when I had that little sitcom for a while, <laughs> she was the chef on the sitcom. At least we ate great. We did. We ate we really did. good. But she has got a fantastic new book out called Good Food for Good Times. Now, I got to tell you this. Here at Emerald Live, we get inundated with books. We get inundated with chefs. We don't have a lot of chefs on the, on the show unless they really have a lot of meaning, a lot of passion about food and really add something to uh, the craft. Because I'm more of the music guy, so we, over the years, Doc, have had... How many music people? I mean, name name a few of them, Doc, we've had. Charlie Daniels. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Hagar. Sammy Hagar, Jill Albright. Um, Keep going. Uh, name some, fellas. I... Well, you lost Michael count. Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. Yeah. Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. Michael. He was awesome. Buddy Guy. Buddy, Buddy Guy. guy. Yeah. Dr. John. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> That's right. And who, who was that? else, Mike? Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Oh. Um, Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau, yeah. Al Jarreau, right. Trisha many Trisha times. Trisha uh, Billy Trisha. Joel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Martina McBride. Yeah, Martina McBride. That's right. Man. And Chef Jamie Gwen is in the house. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, uh, um, when I, uh, you know, we've been friends, so when I got her book and uh, her mom, Lana's there, and uh, I started looking at some of these things, and then I actually started cooking some dishes out of it, because it's a really, really friendly cooking book. You know, it's not like, doesn't have like 72 ingredients, <laughs> you know, that you got to spend the weekend shopping. I mean, you know, it's really, this dish that we're going to do right now is called a hot clam dip. I'm going to ask Chef Jamie to come on up. And uh, let us run through this thing here. <laughs> Chef Jamie Gwen. <laughs> Hello, pal. How are you? All right. All right. It has so, been a pleasure to cook with you for 10 years, but it is a privilege to be here. This 10? is great, huh? Yeah, this is pretty great. 
Love you, them. You digging for clams? I love them. You see, I, you I grew clams. I grew up with, with with you know with clams, obviously. Right. And you're starting with cream cheese, which is another thing. You can put that basically on a bumper of a car and it tastes <laughs> good. You know what I mean? And when you add stuff to it, it just tastes even better. And yep. sometimes the dip makes the party. Because just like your food, this is one of those dishes that causes people to bunch together mm -hmm. and stand in front of it, which like is great. In the corner. In the corner, right. right. At would, a party. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. We're going to dump a couple of tablespoons, and it's a dump recipe. It's easy. It's one of those memorable, celebratory kind of dishes, right, that you gather for the big game or friends and family or an open house. Well, I was joking I earlier. I, I do, too. I was joking earlier about uh, the, the orange cello because I yes. saw Lana had an orange cello in there that she makes. Right. Another fantastic uh, recipe in there. Thank you. And then it was, uh, I actually made that Sunday chocolate Sunday cake. Oh, a triple brownie. Oh, my. Chocolate Lord, fudge cake. Yeah. Yes. That one's not bad either. So onion, cream cheese. All I right, wanted so this right cheese, now. cream cheese. You got some grated onion yep. so that it disperses all and the way And it should through. be soft, right? It should be soft. Leave it out at room temperature, in fact, till it softens. Exactly. Yep. Uh, the juice, a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Yep. Just to heighten the flavor. Mm -hmm. This dip has the four food groups that you love, I know, and me too. It has cheese, beer, hot sauce, and chips. <laughs> Surrender already. Surrender already. And then, you know, it tops very well. Thank you, Chef. My pleasure. With something that I know you love, too. You could throw a little horseradish in and yes. smoke clams, which I know you love that smoky Smoking, flavor. Yes. And then you top it with bacon, and then it couldn't get any better oh. than that, right? Yeah. You, know, you do it's like get, bacon. I, I love that That's bacon. That's what I heard. Stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, it's getting that, uh, it is that time of the year, right? All these dips and parties and dip yeah. parties, and that's why we're having a party here tonight. And then we're going to roll in past the holidays, and then we'll kick it up for the old football uh, championships, right? Man, I, go ahead, anyhow. Okay, a couple of tablespoons of beer. What you do with the rest of the bottle is up oh, we'll to you. We'll save that. We don't waste anything here. No. I'll tell you that. <laughs> we're on one of those tight budgets these yeah, days, you uh -huh. know what I mean? And then... A teaspoon or so of Worcestershire, which yep. you love. And I love this flavor. Chili pepper, tamarind, anchovy, all in one bottle, right? Created by the British. Love it. Stuff is brilliant. It is Absolutely brilliant. flavorful and wonderful. And I know okay. you love it. So get that beer mixed into the cream cheese. Now, that's all you, Chef. Because yep. there's nothing better than Emerald's Kick It Up hot sauce. Enough. <laughs> You so taught me. you got the cheese, and you got beer, and you got a little onion. Not looking so bad, right? And then, can you, uh, would you do your little, thing for little us? Little essence? Yes, please. Right in here? Little bam! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Since I was emeraldized years ago, I have never made a dish without that. <laughs> That's you what sweet. we call it. Once you're emeraldized, you never go back. <laughs> And once this gets all mixed in, then we yep. add three cans of chopped clams. And again, you can use the fresh clams, the steamers, the cockles that you love, yep. and steam them and throw them in. You can add smoked clams. I don't think there's anything clams. wrong with clam, uh, uh, canned clams. I really don't. I don't it's all about anything clams. wrong with clam, uh, uh, canned clams. I really don't. I don't it's either. all about the quality. I agree. You know, and you know, re recently, Jamie, I you know, I've been doing a lot of this can research stuff. And there's some countries that are really into it, like in Italy. Some great Italy. seafood shellfish, Absolutely. things that you peel the top off of. So you want this in here now? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. And the juice, Beautiful. a little bit of the juice, and too? And a little bit of the juice, too, yeah. Okay. I like clam juice, too. I think it's a great Whoa. thing to use from the bottle. Yep. I have, and like, memories of in. kind of a clam dip like this now going off in my head. So now, That's what do you... That's what I love about food. I, yep. Creates Are memories. you actually going to bake this? Yeah, we're going to put it into a casserole and bake it in the oven at 400 degrees just till it gets all warm and gooey and the cheese starts to oh. melt. This is so simple and easy, right? Six ingredients. This is so simple and easy, right? Six ingredients. Yeah, I'm going to go home and make it tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm I love, flattered. I don't, Thank I love you. dishes like this. This is, uh, you know... Somewhere between 405 and 410 years old. Please use fresher clams than that. But can you imagine how tough that thing is? I, yeah, you're gonna. I mean, you need a chainsaw to cut that thing. Up. You're gonna have to devise a recipe to braise Ooh. that for a very long time. Yeah. And it goes right into the casserole, 
And then, of course, just for you, Chef. I love it. Some bacon on top. You know, you just never get enough pork fat. And if you, <laughs> it's true. If you add pork fat with clams, I mean, you're in there, you know? And just... then, to use your phrase, you could kick it up if you wanted. Chopped jalapenos, some horseradish, some Mexican chilies. Yeah. Just about anything. It goes right in the oven. Okay. And... So, you, what, what's, uh, what temperature you like? These are your like? secret magic ovens, right? No, no, no. These are real deals. <laughs> we'll come back for that. 400 degrees? Yep. Come back for it. 400 degrees. And then I like to serve it with a, a mix of different dippers. So you could do pita chips, you could yep. do crackers, you could do homemade potato chips. Yep. You could go the low carb way, but why? With veggies and carrots yep. and celery. So that's why but, you and I get along so well. <laughs> right. Now, but, let me ask you this. I thought that was right up your alley. The bread is definitely up my alley. Now, tell me about the inspiration of good food for good times. Because. Well, you're on the radio at KABC. Yes, you know, I've you. been uh, fortunate to be on your show many, yeah, many we've times. We've been fortunate to have you. Thank and you. I know that uh, you and I have a gig at HSN. We do. And it's a good gig. that's a good gig. It's a good. They're it good is. people down there, and yeah. uh, it's, I like turning people on to good stuff. But Me too. really and truly, what it, you know, what are this? Because there's so many great dishes in there. My truest passion is sharing my passion for food and what I love, like you. And you taught me that very much, as did my mom, who is my business partner and best friend. So we wrote this book together because food creates memories. We agree to that, yeah. no doubt. And because the book is chock full of recipes that people genuinely love, that make every day more delicious, that create wonderful, fabulous food to celebrate friends and family together. And there are recipes for every celebration, from a friend caught a fish to to a pasta party, to just the most spectacular feast for Thanksgiving. And we're very proud of this book. Lana and I wrote it together. Really great, great photographs. By the way, everybody in the studio audience gets a copy of Jamie and Gwen's go. new book here. Wow. There you go. Hey, when we come back, folks, we're going to kick it up another now. Chef Jamie Gwen, huh, folks? Yeah. Just joining us. We're having a party here, and we're celebrating with a little good food for good times. And as I said just earlier, everybody in the studio audience is getting a copy of this lovely yeah. book. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Now, we got this thing just bubbling, oozing, and gooing. Perfect. Is that kind of what you yeah, like there? Yeah, that's perfect. All right. It sort of puffs a little bit, and the bacon gets all crispy, yep. and the cream cheese gets all oozy. And you need a crouton. Chef. So we now you just kind of go, oh, look at this. Yeah, just a big, oh, and it's hot. Careful. Big. Oh. That's what everybody gathers around, right? Yep. I'm definitely going to let mine cool. Let me show you this for a second. I got to okay. tell you this. Speaking about this, you might remember this one. This is called Helen's Sausage Bread. Oh. I got some, maybe from the old days, you yeah, remember this. I, I got remember. some sausage, right? Right. Can gonna I add, for you? Yes. Going to okay. add some bell pepper. And then you were talking about jalapeno, so we're going to add some jalapeno in there. You like it hot. Oh, yeah. Some green onions. And then basically what you do is you take some foil oh, like this. This is a great recipe. Whatever, I remember this from a long time ago. Yep. Whatever, you, whatever kind of bread you like, what I like to do is kind of tunnel it out a little bit. Okay? And um, mm. then what we're going to do is this. We're going to start taking some of this. All right? And you start filling in the bread like this. So we're gonna, yeah, I know the peppers aren't 100% done, but we're gonna, you, you'll see the reason for my madness here shortly. All right, now, so that gets in there. Yep. Okay. Gorgeous. Doesn't that look good? Well, we're gonna Beautiful. do another one too. It smells luscious. Yeah. I wish you could smell this. And if you like it hot, you can use the hot sausage. Now, here's the thing. You take a little bit of that cream cheese a theme now, Chef. Don't tell everybody. They'll all be doing this. <laughs> you take some cheddar cheese. Is he the best or what? All right. Then we're going to take like a little sour cream like this, right? Oh, Just... It's low fat. Yeah, this is very low, low fat. fat. 
Now we put the top on it, wrap it in foil. We're going to bake it in the oven when we come back. Ooh la la! Welcome back, folks. If you're just joining us, shame on you. I'm Emma Lugasi. We're having a party tonight! We got my good friend, Chef Jamie Gwen in the house! I give it up for Doc Gibson, the MLI Band! All right. I'm gonna turn you on to a serious party food dish right now. Yeah. Maybe 20 years ago... I'm not going to start dating things. <laughs> Just the other day... <laughs> I uh, sort of got labeled as the uh, savory cheese king. That wasn't just... Yeah. Anything. It was actually a lady by the name of Laura Brody. Do you remember Laura Brody? Yeah, of remember course, her? sure. Dynamite baker and yeah. pastry chef, dear friend. So she's the one that originally turned me on to this thing. And it's a uh, cheesecake that's savory, not sweet. And you can really do a lot of creative things with it. Right now, we're going to make sort of a little Southwest chicken cheesecake. Mm. Mm -mm. And I'm going to show you how it's done. There's basically about, well, there's like four steps. There's the crust mm. that we do in a spring form pan. And I use breadcrumbs, ground up, moistened with butter, tiny little bit of Parmesan cheese, and you bake it for about 10 minutes so that it's firm. That's step number one. There's the batter, and there's the guts of the cheesecake, depending on how creative you want to get. So let me show you first what we're going to do. In a little skillet with olive oil, we're going to saute some onion, a little bell pepper, and I want a little chili. I want some spice in it, so I'm going to add a little chili in here. Jalapeno, pableno, whatever you like, serrano. And a little garlic as well inside of that, right? Oh, yeah. We're going to add a little salt. And some fresh ground pepper. Now, we want to just kind of saute these to the, like, translucent. Okay? Six or eight minutes. So they're soft. Then, I've got diced chicken. And I've got a little bit of Southwest seasoning here. Uh -huh. So inside of it, it's got chili powder, cumin, Mexican oregano, you know, stuff that you would resemble to the Southwest. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to season the chicken up heavily, heavily. Huh. Then, a little oil here. Now I'm turning the skillet up, and uh, we're going to start browning the chicken a little bit. I've done them with crab meat. I've done them with lobster. I've done them with smoked salmon. You can let your mind run wild. Yeah. So we're going to start sauteing this now. While that's working, the vegetables are working. Let's go over here to now the guts, the filling of the cheesecake. Cream cheese, room temperature soft, like Jamie said earlier, or it just doesn't work. I like to get it nice and smooth, no lumps. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna jack it up a little bit. Oh. Now. Oh. Yes, now. Next, we're going to add a little sour cream in here. Okay? A little sour cream. 
a little Parmesan cheese. Ooh. About five eggs. You're supposed to add them one at a time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, slowly, because you see, my friend here. <laughs> now. Ho! Oh! Uh, wrong way. <laughs> that was like in reverse. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Kind of peeled out there, Doc. <laughs> so now we're going to incorporate all of that. Nice. All right, let's check on this here. Oh, this is very translucent. Look at that. Beautiful. Then the chicken. Oh, yes. Dancing. Can you smell that? Oh, yeah. Are we having a party or what, huh? Yeah. Now, here's the big part that I was telling you about. You're gonna look awfully silly if you don't do this, because what you gotta do now is you gotta scrape the sides and the bottom. Make sure everything's incorporated here. Oh. See, look at that. Can you imagine if you didn't do that and that landed on the bottom of your cheesecake? How embarrassed you would look? Now, back in it goes. Oh, yeah, this is looking yeah, really good. good. Now, right when it's all incorporated, we're going to add some good old aged cheddar cheese in here. Nice. Wow. Oh, yeah. Come on, this is a big fancy show here. Come on. <laughs> Chef Jamie's in the house. What do you expect? <laughs> now. <laughs> now what we're going to do. <laughs> Funny. If we can get this all, oh, look at that. We even got it off tonight. So now we're going to knock this back a little bit. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Beautiful. Now, oh yeah, get all that cheese. Now, folks, here's what we're gonna do, right? The vegetables are nice and cool. When they are, we're gonna fold them in there. The chicken's cooked, cooled. We're gonna fold that in there. When we come back, you're not gonna wanna miss this awesome Southwest cheesecake. And then let me tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some Did you have a chance to kind of look at your favorite dish in, uh, in Jamie's book? <laughs> What'd you find? Tiramisu. Where? Tiramisu. Tiramisu? Oh. Okay. That's a good one. Beer can chicken. Beer can chicken. <laughs> one of my faves. <laughs> Mac, Mac and, and cheese. cheese. Gotta go. Oh. Beautiful book, folks. Jamie Gwen in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Good food for good time. You, the chef. chicken cooled. Got it on the top here, waited for you. You want to be sure now to fold the vegetables and the chicken in here. And look, don't worry about, see, it's got a little bit of all that spice that was in the pan. Now, you're going to put this right in here. I don't use a water bath, but you certainly can. If you want a water bath, you could put a little water in here. That will uh, give it a little steam. 
The density of this, I don't really think it's necessary, but that's just my opinion. 350 degrees, and this is going to bake for about an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes, okay? So we're going to put this in the oven. Oh, you want to talk about good. The thing about this is this. It serves a lot of people. So you got this big 10, 12-inch spring pan. You only need a little sliver of this stuff. I'm going to show you some accoutrements that we're going to do with this. But first, yeah. and then, yeah. you thought I forgot about the sausage bread, huh? Oh. Oh, yeah, babe. So, what we're going to do here, Helen's sausage bread. Oh, look at this. Oh. 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 I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> Let's show you. You want to use a serrated knife for this, okay? The one with the teeth on it. The one that you don't really know what to do with in your knife kit, right? <laughs> See, it really, it's not crispy because what happened, okay? Are you into this kind of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do we have in here? We have cheese? We got... Sausage? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not but I mean, my any, guys, I'm here. not giving you any of my sausage. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this, folks. See? Oh, We're going to let my good friend here, Jamie, mm. see what she thinks Thank right you, here. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. Thank you. Helen's sausage bread. We're going to cut some up, get the audience crazy. Yeah. Now, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking about crazy, oh, tamales. Does anybody in the studio audience, on a serious note, has, does anybody make mm. tamales anymore? Oh, my God. I have one. <laughs> 700 mm. people in the audience. We got one. <laughs> Chef, this rocks. Isn't it great? It's, uh, the cheese melts and delicious. it gets all oozy goozy. Well, listen, folks, get with the tamale program. When you're going to make them, make them. You're going to make like 50 of them, 100 mm. of them. Yeah. Just don't make like six. But I got one that I got a little southern twist to it. I use grits. Mm. So I take grits with warm chicken stock. And you just let that sort of soak like that. And then all of a sudden, the grits, mm. they get, like, thirsty. <laughs> and they <laughs> suck all the life out of things. And then it becomes like this which is good. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is break it up a little bit. And then the traditional tamale, you would use lard, which I have in here right now. You want to get it good and soft. Uh-oh, what happened here? Vince! <laughs> Vince! That was a cumin. Yeah. I am um, having an accident here with the cumin. <laughs> but don't worry, don't panic, okay. I'm going to fix it. I think you got it. Vince. All right. I'm a little shy on the cumin. All oh, right. say hi to Vince. Hey, Vince. I'll, I'll pick it up. No, I got it. I don't need you to bring the wet vac out or anything. I'm just right. telling you I had a little problem here. Maybe I, I'm going to, I got it. I think you got it. All right. All right, thanks. All right, All right. So we're going to add cumin in here. We're going to add mozzarella, corn flour, baking powder. And then we're going to add the grits in here. Generally, there would be more masa flour, right? Mm -hmm. This is very, very unique. Now, we're going to get all of that mixed in there. That's just going to make the tamale dough. Meanwhile, what we did is you take some corn husks, okay? Soak them up. That's what we're doing here. You can buy them. Keep them nice and moist like this until you're ready to go. I got some pobleno chilies, mm. roasted, chicken meat, and cheese, of course. Now...
Oh, yeah, baby. Now. We want to scrape this down a little bit. I can see we got some lot up here. What a shame. <laughs> now, one more time, one more mix. And then I'm going to show you the magic. Mm. Now, so we're going to come over here. You're going to take out a husk. I want you to be able to see this. Okay? The rough side should be out. Smooth side in. So you're going to take a little of the tamale dough, like a little ball like this, and you're going to sort of shape it. Oh, yeah, babe. And then, and then, yes. a little chilies, some chicken, and the cheese. Now you're saying to yourself, how is he possibly going to wrap that thing? <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to get another husk. Oh. You're going to go over it like this. Uh -huh. That's great. And you're going to fold this. And you're going to fold this. And you're going to fold this. Now, I just recently had a lady on the show not long ago from California. And I used to spend a lot of time, like, wrapping, tying these things up. She makes a hundred of these things a week for her family. She never ties them. Wow. So I started thinking about it, and I'm saying, man, I've been, you know, here I am doing all this time, so I'm not tying them. <laughs> all right? I'm not going to tie yeah. them. When we come back, when we come back, I'm going to have these tamales steaming, which is very, very important. I'm going to make a wonderful cilantro pesto. Mm. And a little fresh salsa, salsa fresca, for the cheesecake. But you'll see that when we come back. Three, Stick around. Four, Doc, four. see the finale here now folks we started steaming the tamales and if you have one of these Asian steamers you can really get a lot you can stack them up keep stacking them stacking them stacking them I got a nice row on the bottom here rolling out some more I made a little bit of that uh, cilantro pesto pine nuts cilantro a little olive oil little cheese salt pepper real simple now what I'm gonna do is I've got tomatoes that I'm gonna add some onion also a little cilantro, a little bit of garlic, yeah. and a little bit of salt, and then the juice of about three limes. And then what you want to do is you want to take that, and basically we're just going to make a very, very quick salsa fresca, which means fresh. That's it. I don't want to puree it too, 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 too much. Oh, yeah, this is looking mighty good. See that here? Yeah, the real, real McCoy. All right, so tamales are steaming, and we've got the uh, fresh salsa working now. The cheesecake bakes, let it cool on a rack, and then what I like about this thing is you can really put it in the ice box. That'd be the refrigerator. And uh, basically... You can, um, you can basically just, when you're ready, a day, two days, gets better, three days, just wrap it up. I took a knife and went around it. What we're going to do is now we're going to take it right out of the spring form pan, all right? Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to take a slice of this, 
like a little wedge like this because it's pretty rich, right? It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then here's what, here's what I like to do. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is, right? Wow. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the cilantro pesto. And what we're going to do is take our little wedge like this right there. And then we're going to take our beautiful fresh salsa right on top like that. And then just a little bit of uh, chive, kind of like this here. And a little essence like that. And there you have it, folks, a little cheesecake, all right? Now, you got to let this steam for at least an hour, depending on what kind of tamales, sometimes two. What I like to do, though, is serve it like this. I like to open it up. Oh, yeah, babe. With a little knife like this, just open up the tamale. I like the husk. I think it's pretty decorative, right? Yeah. Then what I do is take a little guacamole, oh. take a little bit of hot salsa, yeah. and a little bit of sour cream or a little creme fraiche. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. How's that, all right? Beautiful. All righty, all righty, all righty, right? There you have it, a little tamale. I want to thank Lana Sills for coming by with her daughter, Chef Jamie Gwynn. Good food for good times. I want to thank you for being here. I love you. Good luck. I'm Emma Lagasse. See you next time, everybody.